Hello there, neighbor Renos. Got a few quick questions to answer as far as what the next Xbox is going to look like. Now, I'm basing these questions off of, well, the digital trends list that compares the upcoming Xbox to the PlayStation 5, as well as what we already know from the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 5. First things first. What's it going to look like? How big is it going to be? What color? Blah, blah, blah. What, what's the basic cosmetic stuff we need to look at? As far as dimensions and weight, we could likely expect it to be around the same size as the One X. It's only been a couple of years, so the architecture can't have changed too much. And stylistically speaking, a black box, not too hard to comprehend, is it? It's not too hard to make space for something with discrete rectangular prism features. It's not too hard to make up that kind of space. As far as what color is it going to be? Let's see. The OG Xbox was black. The Xbox 360 was black. The Xbox One was black. The Xbox One X is black. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really seeing a pattern here. Are you? Now, as far as the CPU goes, we are comparing that to the PlayStation 5's 8-core AMD Ryzen. Now, taking a look at what the, the Ryzen is purporting, even the lower-end model is starting with a base clock speed of 3.1 GHz. And in order for the, the upcoming Xbox to remain competitive, we know that it would need to remain in that realm as well. So I would, I would picture at least three, anywhere from three to 3.7 gigahertz processing speed. I know that's quite a bit of range to cover, but it's still going to give us quite a bit of processing power as well, which is still going to be quite a bit of a jump when you consider that the One X has a 2.3 gigahertz processor speed. As far as the GPU goes, we are assuming it's based on the Arcturus 12 line in the AMD GPU line. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know your, your GPU generations, the Arcturus is the next generation up past the Navi. So we can expect well, we already know that the PlayStation 5 is likely going to be in the realm of about 12 teraflops in, in visual fidelity. Now, if there's anything we can try to extrapolate from that, it is that we could likely expect something on the, something on the order of 13 to 15. It, it makes sense, right? With with the Stadia already coming out with a launch speed of 10 teraflops, the PlayStation 5 at 12, and the One X coming out at 6 as opposed to the PlayStation, the PS4 Pro's 4, it makes sense that the upcoming Scarlet would at least be a little bit stronger than the than the PlayStation 5 assuming they tried to they tried to maintain competition and competitiveness next up is the question of memory one thing we already know from the One X is that it had 12 gigabytes of RAM running at 6.8 gigahertz speed, running speed so we could likely expect something on the order of 16 to 20. I'm, I'm not a big computer specifications guy, but that kind of seems realistic to me. That's a, a small jump over the course of a couple years, comparatively speaking. Now, as far as storage goes, when the One X launched, it came out with a One terabyte 
hard disk drive. Now, because of the growing size of games and the, just the sheer amount that we actually have to download here, it seems to me like a two terabyte solid state drive is not outside the realm of possibility. Two ter anything, in fact, I believe that anything less than two terabytes would be a slap in the face to consumers at the moment. And the next big question is all about the optical drive. <clears throat> One thing I've already reported on is how Xbox plans on splitting their production line. One with the drive and one without. That is purely streaming based. As far as how that optical drive will function, we could likely expect, we, we could obviously expect Blu-ray functionality there. As far as whether or not it will support being able to play your CDs or DVDs, that's another story entirely but we can obviously expect Blu-ray functionality at the very least. The next big question is all about 4K and HDR. That question is obviously yes. The One X has both of those things and they are trying to remain competitive against the PlayStation 5 which is already confirmed to have 8K functionality. As far as whether or not the new Xbox is going to have 8K is up for debate. Because as I'm sure you are very well aware, and I've also touched on this as well, Sony is the only one known to have any 8K TVs in production. So it wouldn't really make much sense for Microsoft to create a console that advertised their opponent's television sets. But, you know, crazier stuff has happened. The next big question is all about ports. How many HDMI ports is it going to have? How many USBs? And everything that you need to know. Just, let, let me just put it to you this way. We can expect at least, at least, two HDMI ports. We, we want two because there's going to be one in and there's going to be one out. The question is though, why is there going to be one in? Well, because of what we know from last year's E3, when they were talking all about the, when Phil Spencer was on stage and trying to hype up everything. Well, he did a, well, honestly, he did, he did a good job, but huh, how shall I put this? Like one of the, one of the biggest things he talked about at last year's E3 was all about mixing Windows functionality with the Xbox One. If there's anything we already know from Windows functionality it is that they want to they want to implement mixed reality far more. So it stands to reason that an HDMI in would be able to fun would be able to power a Windows mixed reality headset. So that's how they're going to bring forward the virtual reality portion into their upcoming Xbox console through Windows mixed reality. Now as far as USB ports go Honestly, I, I, I would expect at least three USBs. One of them, at the very least, being a USB 3. That way, you'll be able to process all of your incoming and outgoing stuff far faster. While those are more expensive to produce, it, they also bear the, bear the cost quite well. Next big question is all about the online subscription. Another thing that I have talked about before is what that substance of the subscription is going to be like. Um, that substance is along the lines of a Game Pass Ultimate. 
What's a Game Pass Ultimate, you may ask? That is essentially the cross between Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass. That that price tag is sitting on the order of like $15 a month. But even still, that's just a, that's just a rumor, nothing to be nothing substantiated about it yet. However, we can expect more news about that at this year's upcoming A3. And then next up we have the connectivity. Obviously, there's going to be network connectivity. That's like that's like why are we even bringing that up? And on top of that, we already know that while well, Xbox Live Gold is essentially a plus anymore, it's a necessity in order to be able to play with your friends or do much of anything online. So, again, that's not even really a question. Now, as far as price goes, one thing we already know is that the PlayStation 5 is sitting on the order between five and six hundred dollars because microsoft's console is going to want to remain competitive they are going to also fall within that same price range five to six hundred dollars and then as far as availability goes when can you expect this thing on the shelves let's see for that we go back to our very own console Xbox launches for the OG Xbox we got no November 15 2001 we, in the 360 we got November 22nd 2005 for the Xbox one we got November 22nd 2013 and for the one X we have November 7th 2017 so I don't know about you but I'm not really seeing a pattern there it's not like all of them are coming out in November or that the PlayStation 5 is coming out next year or anything like that. I, I can't really draw a line there. It's not obvious enough that it's coming out next November. Not at all obvious. But I think that's a good place to end the video. So... If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible person for speaking in a relatively monotone voice. And, you know, just being a downright horrible person. So, touch off for now.